Ah! Great news, everyone! We will be returning back to Archimedes Station in three days, Monday. I'll be coming home early. Yay! That means I'm going to shave my beard. Um, good news, Primetime's returning back to his station, which means I'm relieved from duty here. Uh, I might give, get him on as a cameo tomorrow for meme review. So don't quote me on that. I haven't uh, talked him into it yet. But maybe I can get prime time to do another episode with us. But uh, at least an intro, right? All right, but that's not today's show. Today's show is replay of the week. So let's jump into it. What do we got? Zero's Vega. Remember, I'm playing at one and a half speed. And if you want to send in replays for replay of the week, upload them to YouTube and send me the link online or email in the description below. All right. Zero's Vega versus Vega. Pure damage. Ooh, I kind of like it. It's a Vega Vega... What are we doing here, though? Shadow, and then the increased crit chance pans. Okay, so Zero's Vega. does It's a one-slot bust. Oh, it's tier 10. Breakdown, Gemini, Shockwave level 2. Check him out. Tier 10 killing tier 12. And the Gemini breakdown. We often forget how good Vega is. Don't, don't sleep on Vega. All right, Zombie Fox versus Stella. Oh, we're going fast. Is this a SWE replay? It probably is. Yeah, it's tier 11. Man, this, this new meta of the tier 11 troops on Hancock with Sui gear is ridiculous. It is just absurd, man. He's so good. He's a must-have commander. Plasma used to be a must-have. Now it's a Hancock must-have. Yeah, it's a two-minute replay. You kind of see what happens. He just slowly whittles him down. I see a lot of people doing this one per slot, and the reason is you want one unit per slot to trigger, fer trigger Feral Strength as much as possible, and then you start one-shotting eventually. But you can actually run into situations where uh, they have a max leadership march and high defense, and you don't have enough damage. So... In situations like this, it's almost worth to just put like four or five units per slot instead of just one. Um, I guess, you know, often you'll probably get beat if you do have run into someone who has too much resistance weakened. Anyway, this Stella did have a 200% resistance weakened right here, the chest piece on. And uh, still, Hancock had enough, so very nice. All right, nice. Next replay. I can't say the title of it. These people, these people, they title their, their videos. Bobby Yaga, another tier 11 Hancock. It's almost like the same replay, huh? I feel bad because we just had one. I gotta like pass through it. We all know what's gonna happen. We don't have the gear here. I guess we could jump to the end. We can jump to the end. We'll show the gear. So tier eleven versus tier eleven, sweet gear versus you know non resistance weakened gear. We'll jump to the end here. Oh, this internet up here, man, not so great. It says I've got bad satellite up here on this on this station. Uh, Stella with a damage build. I mean, it's tier eleven. You could do that, but no, nah, not against Hancock. Not against Hancock. All right. So, Shinobi's... Uh-oh. Shinobi's Tier 10 Vega. Scorpio Breakdown against Fat Cat. Oh, no. Fat Cat. Fat Cat took the hit. That was in a galactic battle, I think, right? That was... Yeah, it was like number 15 tiles. Oh, that was quick. All right. Sir Nukes a lot versus Brody Yaga. Oh, it's a plasma bomb. It's infantry, infantry. Oh, no. It's Banelings. He's, plasma's a Baneling. Oh, there it is again. There it is again. Oh, this poor Gilly. Oh, it's like Gilly has nothing to stop Plasma. Everything she has works against Plasma. Nothing. Oh, it's just just so much. Just beatdowns. Just absolute beatdowns. And it's like the Tier 10 Infantry, Tier 12 uh, HP Troop. They don't have the shield. At least the Tier 12 Attack Troops can get a shield. Yeah, see, he absorbed part of it. I'll show you guys that again. So watch this. If you look at um, slot number... Yeah, well, I went back 10 seconds. But if you look at slot number four for Gilly, way over there. Um, so she'll trigger right there. Okay, so 800, 800 million, right? So she has 752 troops. And I know that's hard to see. 752 in slot four. Uh-oh, our camera's messed up. Here, I can fix that. There we go. 752 in slot four. And then when the bomb goes off, the shield should absorb it. I'm not sure if it does it because the order of operations is strange. Yeah, so 750, 40 units die, 40 units die in the in slot four, and then how many slot units die in slot one? 1136. Actually, less troops die, but those are the HP troops, so it's hard to say. So it doesn't look like the shield absorbed plasma's bomb there, like the bomb hit before the shield did. So that's unfortunate. Uh, I'd like to have seen that with a little more proof. Is there another part of the replay here? Oh, we got a little part two. Maybe we'll see it. No, we won't, because there's no tier 12 eight, uh, attack troops. Okay, moving on. All right, it's Rip Vega. Rip Vega is the name of the replay. Braden's tier 12 HP, uh, attack troops versus Huberian. Nice shot. Uh, it's a small Huberian. He's like two-thirds the size. 
Counter move. Okay, he's he's getting it done. Not a very hard hit, but the second hit is going to be hard. Wow, is that the penetration build? Jeez, let's watch that again. Do I have uh, troop stats? I don't have I don't have uh, uh, the the gear to look at. Blah, blah, blah. Talking's hard. It's been a long day, guys. It's been, it's been a long day. It's been a long week. Poor Magnum PI. I messed up his Pimp My Arc episode. The audio was a mess. I tried to fix it. It's still a mess. It was a recording issue. It's a setup issue. I just... Archimedes Station's been letting me down, boys. It's been letting me down. I'm going to have to rebuild it. Uh, I've just been... I've been playing with too many different pieces of hardware and settings and all that. But uh, anyway, let's jump into Destroyer's Replay. Hancock, Dragon Slayer. I love the 50% speed because the FPS looks super high. It looks good, right? Like, when you watch the replays, like, it looks very fresh and fluid. It's better than on the game, right? Like, you see Hancock's shoulder movements. Look at that. Like Wings of Eternity popping off. Feral Strength, so good. It's the flavor of the week, man. Tier 11 Hancock really hit the scene uh, about a month ago. I mean, he's been around, but, like, now everybody runs him. Everybody runs a Sweek. I don't... Can we come up with a better name than Sweekock? I mean, it's like, it almost sounds like Peacock, but it's just got a big C-O-C-K in it. <laughs> I'm fast-forwarding this replay. <laughs> Moving on. Macaque! <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's not even deliberate. Like, his name's Hancock, and this guy's name is Meacock. What can I say? All right, I'm definitely getting flagged by YouTube. All right, Tier 11, sweet. Again, man, that's just the story of the day. How many, like, five out of six replays, five out of eight have been... Hancock Swee gear, and I'm not even mad at him. Like, listen, if you're watching this and going like, oh, that Hancock's a good guy, it's like, no, you don't realize he's the best. He's the best low-risk March commander in this game rewards uh, low-risk, you know, exchanges like this. Healing the commander for 500 gold is nothing if you take out 10 times as many troops as you lose, right? And you can do a lot more than that. You can get into the hundred fold. It's just crazy with Sweet Gear. And the thing is that you can do Sweet Gear with any commander. The reason it's crazy on Hancock is because his Feral Strength lowers their defense so much that eventually they have zero defense. And then all of a sudden you're one-shotting them with one troop versus a full march. It's absurd. Anyway, we know what's going to happen here. Uh, on to the next one. Vendetta versus Captain Crunch. Orochi showing up. Okay. Okay. Uh, tier 9 versus Corrosive or Minderbot. Level 30 skills. Okay, so it's, it's definitely simulated. Breakdown. Oh. Well, yeah, it's like a fair fight. So, Breakdown. Uh, Vega should be able to one-shot if he gets his triggers right. It's the second turn around that he's going to struggle. But, yeah, he's going to be fine here. Oh! What the? Hold up. Hold up, hold. Are you guys seeing this? That I'm. What trigger did I just miss? How come he healed completely? Is this a bugged replay? Okay, here we go. Awakening, corrosive armor, mender bot. Okay, hits. Okay, no misses. Sorry, Sagittarius. Okay, so he kills all the troops. Now he has corrosive armor, so I believe that debuffs Vega. Vega doesn't take damage. He just gets a debuff. So the next time he attacks. He takes damage, like a napalm bomb, right? Yeah, like napalm bomb. But look at that. Zero damage, okay. And what is the zero damage from? Zero damage is from maybe the corrosive armor? Then why does he heal back to full life? I think this is a bugged replay. If anyone knows what's happening here, please put it in the comments below because this one is confusing. Replay number nine. Okay. Uh, let's see. Replay number nine. Yeah, someone use that and say, replay number nine, here's what happened. All right, Exarian, or, I'm sorry, Meekock versus Exarain. I like the Dragon Slayer. I mean, I don't like the Dragon Slayer, but I like the setup. The one slot, a huge shockwave. Doesn't kill them all, but almost does. Dude, Hancock and Dragon Slayer have made it so that lower tier, tier nine, tier ten, eleven players can really punch tier twelve. I'm happy for them. I'm, it's, people always say, oh, the devs are always doing stuff for the boss players. They do stuff for the little guys, too. I feel like there's a narrative. You know, you can shape the narrative on how the developers are giving us the game. And it's like, I could easily turn it against them all the time. But I really don't. I don't want to have a negative gaming experience. And I think it's important to be fair in your journalism. And I think the developers, as greedy as they are on some things, I also want to make sure they're greedy enough that they make money so the game keeps getting, you know, advertising and new content. So, all in all... I'm pretty happy with the game lately. Th their dealings with me, not so great. But as far as the game is concerned, I'm okay with it. 
Oh, that, that is an old classic phone. If you're wondering, that is definitely an old classic phone. Shout out to Serenity. She got me this mug. I haven't had any fan mail in a while. I have a fan mail address. So you guys want to send me pins or, I don't know, all types of crazy stuff. I've had people paint me melt signs. Um, I was going to start talking about all the great things I've got. London's Fog and Monkey sent me this amazing uh, Bad Titans glass crystal with an LED in it. It's so sick. Um, I don't know. I, and, then of course, the bobblehead. You guys have seen the melt bobblehead? That, that blows people's minds when they show that. I show that off whenever people come over. I think it's so cool. Okay. All right. Back to it. Lunch Lady. Lunch Lady. Okay. Preemptive. Awakening. Oh! Hits the back row. Hold up. I missed that. That was the tier 10. Tier 10 can't dodge tier 12. Awakening. Oh. Okay. But Stella's not done yet. Here comes a Terra Space. Oh. Boba Fett doesn't have the right research or the right gear because that should have hit way harder. Those are the defense troops. Shockwave. Ouch. Okay. Well. Uh, Lunch Lady... <laughs> Bring in the action. I gotta mute this. All right, Aaron's Vega versus a Black. Uh oh, the Black's already been beat down. He lost all his other troops. He was probably doing the four slot bust, where you know you're not gonna have first strike, so you do the troops in the fourth slot, and you're the and like you lose a couple troops, and that's like the sec that that Vega march like is like the second or third to attack him when he's garrisoned on a ship. Whoa, whoa, it's a bugged replay. Trip out. That was dank, oversaturated, and it was all messed up. All right, Villain Kamini versus Doctor BC. I see Dr. BC, and I just think, like, are we still talking about Hancock? All right. Plasma with Mysterious Wind and HP. Oh, no. The phone's dying. <laughs> Plasma with Wings of Eternity. This Is it simulated? It might be. Right? Because it's a max leadership plasma. That's not possible. That's not possible. I, I mean, obviously, the, uh, Hancock's supposed to win this. With Sweet Gear, I guess he could do it, but, like... Plasma has to land the hit. So if, Plas if Plasma doesn't have a guaranteed hit... Whoa. Mysterious Wind. I thought he had Wings of Eternity. Sonar. Feral Strength. Oh, the, the Feral Strength already landed. Okay. How... Co okay, so he has to have Sweet Gear on. Okay. But I thought he landed the hit. It said Immune. Oh, because the Sweet Gear... And then there's no Tear Space damage because he's not hitting the front row. Oh, that's really... This is a clever replay. Okay, I, I see you. I see you, villain. This is a a little different than the normal Swee build, but um, clever use of it. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah, your research is definitely far better. Interesting, very interesting. That was kind of a neat one. For anyone that was just like listening to me ramble, not paying attention, go back and watch that. That was kind of cool. All right, next replay: uh, Hannibal versus Chameleon. Chameleon. This is probably from the six v six. The five, yeah, the six v six. Uh, Hannibal. I was watching Hannibal on Netflix. It's actually pretty good, man. What's that guy's name? Mads Larkin? Mads, Mads something? He's, he's a really good actor, man. He was in uh, Rogue One, wasn't he? I think he was, um, what's her face's, what's her face's dad? Yeah, I think, I think he was. Um, Mads Milliken? I don't remember his name. All right, Wings of Eternity, Feral Strength. So good on Hancock, man. Tier 10, Tier 12. It's hard to say. You never know what buffs they have, but... Um, this Dragon Slayer just needs to land a huge hit. Scorpio, Crushing Blow, Shockwave. This should be the end of him. So if this doesn't end him, something's not right. This Feral Strength hit. I guess Feral Strength could have really softened him up. But yeah, man, hey, there you go. Nice little replay there. Good win. You know, that's I, something you don't expect to win when you have Tier 10 versus Tier 12 like this. And then to pull something like this out feels really good. So I, I don't know if... Mm, could that be replay of the week? It's a 6v6 replay. I don't want to punish people for those replays. But this was like a, this is a bold move. He probably watched this replay and he was like, no way. I think so. All right, we got three more replays to challenge that one. We'll see. Okay. Uh-oh. Mighty Mo versus Shogo. Hancock, Hancock. Oh, Jesus. It's all, it's all Hancocks, baby. Feral Strength, preemptive. Cassiopeia. Uh-oh, Cassiopeia got off first. That means the other Hancock can't uh, use Feral Strength on him. Uh-oh, I got Mighty Mo winning this one big time. Big shields, too, from the Tier 2. Um, did we ever decide if the Tier 12 defense troops were better for Hancock or not? I mean, everyone's using Tier 11 anyway, but, like, doesn't the HP troops still have the, you know, ignore or the ignore Swee tier suppression hit? Ignore tier, wait, ignore Swee hit, the tear space? I don't know. Uh, I'm expecting, look at that, dude, look at that. 
Did you see that? He resisted it, too. Watch Mighty Moe and Slot 3. Resistance. Can't, not only do they have Cassiopeia, but Resistance triggered before the Cassiopeia. That's cool. We don't see a lot of Resistance triggers in uh, Replay of the Week, so that's neat. Still don't remember if, if Resistance weeks or works on, on Full Metal. I need to just check it. Someone use the comments. Does Full Metal Steam Cannon uh, get deflected by Resistance? All right, all right. So this is a long replay. We're gonna have to fast forward it. I got my money on Mighty Mo. Finally breaks him down. Yeah, the Cassiopeia eventually wears off each round. The Feral Strength can then reattach, but Cassiopeia doesn't purge off the existing Feral Strength. So Cassiopeia can slow down the, the Feral Strength debuffs, but it doesn't take it away. Wow, this is good. This is good re uh, quality. All right, Destroyer Tier Seven Hancock. Hancock, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this is so much Hancock. I mean, he is the flavor of the week, though, for sure. Galactic Battle Season 11 is totally Hancock. We should have another belt made, right? <laughs> Just have a picture of Hancock on it. Uh, this is this replay is all messy. All right, Crushing Blow, Shockwave, Tier 7, boom, boom. Oh, boy. Remember how glass cannony Tier 7 infantry were? Tier 7 infantry... Okay, for those of you guys that don't know, before Tier 8 and Tier 9, people would run huge armies of Tier 7. And that's when Plasma came out. And then all of a sudden, I learned that you could use Plasma with Tier 2 to just decimate Tier 7 infantry. And there were so many Stella and Neko mains back then with Tier 7 infantry with like fifty to 100,000 leadership. You can just bomb them with like a two or 5,000 Plasma with all Tier 2 and wipe their whole army out. So many players quit. My first guild boss didn't quit, but almost quit. He was like ready to quit the game when he got Neko bombed. Uh, his Neko got plasma bombed uh, with, with Tier 2. I might still have that replay in my archive somewhere. Anyway, shout out to Lion. He comes back every now and again. All right, Badger's Cat. Is that actually Ridiculous Badger? It could be. Nah, he wouldn't feel... Oh, it's Odad. Wait a minute. Who is Badger's Cat? Is that Fat Cat? Might be Fat Cat, too. Odad's Gilly... Oh! I'm black screening. It's a bad replay. Crushing Blow. Shockwave. Ba-boom. Oh, what a shot. Poor Odad. I didn't get to see the whole thing. I was running my mouth. All right, last replay. Replay number 20. Shinobi. Uh, tier 10. Vega breakdown. Oh, one slot. Doesn't have the shockwave, though. Gemini breakdown. Gets it again. No shockwave. Doesn't have enough to break through. Interesting how tanky those tier 12 HP or tier 12 defense troops are. Interesting replay. Actually, I want to watch that again. Okay, let's do that again just for the, just for the sake of... Um, reference right pure damage vega build versus a balance build dragon slayer okay mostly penetration but somewhat balanced because the tyrant armor tyrant armor does nothing for breakdown right it, the breakdown goes right through it so all he triggers i'm gonna double check this wings of eternity breakdown okay that's why so the 600 million crit okay now this is a wings of eternity hit level 25 so it's like 30 percent less Okay, so that's right. 100 million instead of his first hit, which was at 600 million is what we said. Yeah, 600 million. So it's still level 25. Uh, level 25, is it maximum 60% damage or is it 90% at level 60? It's 1.5% per level. So it was like 37%. So instead of hitting for 600 million, he's supposed to hit for... Uh, 200 million. How much does he hit for? 100 million. So the T12 defense troop has twice as much damage mitigation? I want to double check this, though. No, there's no front row stats here. So yeah, it hit for half as much when it should. Wait, whoa, 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 hold up. The Gemini hit for the proper amount 264 million. Okay. 1440 that killed 900 104 million that was the first hit second hit 264 how come he watch this 1777 hits for 100 million loses 300 okay the breakdown stacks with the gemini okay so here's the next hit okay 264 million so 600 troops he loses 800 troops First time he loses 300 troops. Okay, mathematically that makes sense. Never mind. I am a fool. <laughs> Never do math on video.
classic lesson. I learn it every month. And that's it for replay of the week. We've got to pick a winner. I already know who it is because uh, 17 caught my eye early on. So shout out to Shinobi. I think it's Shinobi. Chris Call. Uh, this is going to be our replay of the week because it's kind of a clever play on the Hancock build. Here, let's start it over from the beginning. So uh, you can see the gear here. It's not a SWE build, right? It's the old Hancock build, the standard combat defense commander Hancock. So it's a damage reduction in the pants, HP on the helmet, and then the, 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 the walker weapons, right? The accuracy HP walker weapons. So you would expect, oh, and then the chest piece. Uh, it's the uh, trigger rate chest piece? No, wait a minute. Or is that the tear suppression chest piece? I don't think I like that chest piece. But he's going against basically the same build. Feral Instinct, right? Gets his preemptive. So he's running the Gilly preemptive so his opponent can't trigger Cassiopeia. Gets the Cassiopeia off. Tier 10 in the front, tier 2 in the back. Gets a big shield because of it. Opponent has tier 12 defense troops. They don't hit as hard. And he's already triggering Feral Strength. And his opponent can't trigger uh, his... Yeah, he can trigger his Feral Strength. Yes, he can. So Taurus going off. The tier 2 probably won't do any damage because he does have some tier suppression. Right? The other... We saw that the other... Han oh, wait, no. We have the tier suppression. The other Hancock does not. That tier 2 might might tick away on one tier 12 by the total end of the fight. But once the the dam or the defense is removed, that tier two actually might hit really hard. Uh, this is a classic Hancock build, man. It's so good. Okay. Remember Kilgore's Hancock? Kilgore was a stud, man. Where's Kilgore at? Kilgore, show up in the comments below. If you guys see Kilgore's comment, upvote that. I haven't seen him in a while. But, yeah, I mean, what we really expected here was, I mean, what would you expect in this, right? You just expect the other Hancock to crush him. But instead, the first round, our Hancock gets Cassiopeia off, right? So he can't be Feral Strength. And then he's already triggering Feral Strengths, okay? So he could have he could have ran Wings of Eternity if he wanted to. But the damage is done. We're going into round two, and like half of the other Hancock's army has gone. The Cassiopeia is still hanging over from the first round. And he just re-triggered it a couple times. I mean... It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. And it's scary that a small, dinky Hancock like this can do this to a higher level player with the exact same gear. It's just the luck of the Cassiopeia trigger. That's what it is. I remember doing the testing for... Was it Tank Stella? Who was it? Oh, it might have been Mysterious Warrior. Yes, when I was doing the Mysterious Warrior Stella testing to figure out, is it better to put Mysterious Warrior with Wings of Eternity, or is it better to put Stella with Dual Blades from Mysterious Warrior? Which one should be the main and which one should give their fourth skill? Uh, it turned out that if Elf ever triggered Cassiopeia when I was testing against Elf, if she had first strike and triggered Cassiopeia, I literally did like zero damage, like less than 1%. But if I she didn't trigger Cassiopeia right away, the Dual Blades would pop off and Wings of Eternity would pop off, and it was super one-sided. And it was like, if Elf was defending you would only win 40% of the time. And when you did win, you would you would win by like killing 100 to 1 troops. But when you lost, you would lose 100 to 1. It was, it was not like a nice bell curve. It was very opposite. Um, anyway, I thought that was interesting. But uh, all right, let's wrap this replay up. Give the shout out to Mighty Mo. You win replay of the week. Thanks for submitting these videos. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow for meme review and hopefully a special cameo from Primetime. Thank you.